What does science have to say about how to order exercises within your workout? This video will tell you the answer. Welcome back. Dr. Milo Wolf here today with Strong by Science, bringing you the latest research on how to order exercises. First up, why would exercise order even influence how much muscle you gain, how much strength you gain, and so forth? Well, as you train, you get fatigued. And so, whatever you train first within a session will be the highest quality work you do. Then, as you do set after set and exercise after exercise, you build up fatigue. But ultimately, some fatigue may not necessarily be that detrimental. For instance, you can still get an effective session in for muscle growth, even if you're not perfectly recovered from the last session. And so what about exercise order? Do we really see better muscle growth and better strength gains when we train something first? And well, that's exactly what a meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues tried to look at. They looked at the impact of different exercise orders on both strength gains and on hypertrophy. For strength specifically, whatever you trained first saw the greatest improvements, with effect sizes ranging from about 0.3 to 0.6. These effect sizes would be categorized as small small to moderate. Importantly, the authors also looked at specificity, or essentially the idea that whatever you train first does seem to get the greatest improvements in performance, and that seemed to be correct. And this kind of makes sense. As far as how much strength you gain, we know that lifting heavy is pretty important. For instance, a meta-regression paper by Swinton and colleagues looking at just shy of 300 studies found that the heavier you go for strength, the better. And so if you're starting your session with leg press and then some leg extensions, and then you're squatting, if you're trying to improve your squat max, then by the time you get to that exercise, you might only be able to lift 70 or 80% of your max, which from the perspective of just gaining strength is going to be suboptimal compared to being able to lift more. So for strength, it likely makes sense to start your session with whatever is most important to you in terms of getting stronger. Importantly, higher rep luck and going closer to failure both seem to cause a bit more acute fatigue in terms of how you can perform afterwards compared to staying a bit further from failure and going lower in reps. And so as a general heuristic for strength, starting with your heavier work in the session and starting with your more submaximal work may allow you to maintain performance a little bit better across the session, allowing you to hit heavier loads and potentially get a better stimulus for gaining strength. And so the practice of many powerlifters of starting the session with their squat bench deadlift does likely make sense. Importantly though, what kind of exercise you do probably matters as well. If you're doing calf raises first in your session, hashtag team calves, then you probably won't see a meaningful impact on performance of your squat, bench, or deadlift thereafter. However, if you go the 8-hour arm workout route and then decide to bench afterwards, yeah, don't expect your bench performance to be at its best. However, when it came to hypertrophy in this meta-analysis, they did not find any effect of exercise order on hypertrophy by and large. So is that the end of the story? Is this meta-analysis all we have? Fortunately, no. We have two more studies since then that have also investigated the impact of exercise order on hypertrophy and strength. And I think they're both pretty important. First, we have a 2020 study by Brandao and colleagues that looked at a few different research questions. But they looked at differences in the hypertrophy stemming from the bench press exercise versus the skull crusher exercise in the triceps and pectoralis major muscles. However, for the context of our discussion on exercise order, they also compared the impact of starting with a bench followed by the skull crusher or starting by the skull crusher followed by the bench. They measured both 100 max on the skull crusher and on the bench, and they measured hypertrophy of each individual tricep head alongside the pectoralis major, aka your chest. Here's what they found. In terms of strength, things were relatively similar no matter whether you started with the skull crusher followed by the bench or the bench followed by the skull crusher. In terms of bench press strength gains, things were very similar. In terms of skull crusher strength, there was actually a slight benefit in terms of how much strength was gained to starting with a bench press. So if anything, it seems like it's neutral to positive effects in favor of starting with a compound movement followed by the isolation movement. As bench press strength gains weren't really all that different, but skull crusher outcomes were in favor of the bench press first group. In terms of hypertrophy of the triceps and pecs, things were also relatively similar. However, when it came to the pecs, the medial head of the triceps and the lateral head of the triceps, differences leaned in favor of the bench press first group. So once again, although differences were minimal if there were any, they were in favor of the group that started with bench press first followed by the skull crusher. Once again, lending credibility to the idea that starting with compound work may be beneficial. And for the pecs specifically, this does make some sense. If exercise order were to impact hypertrophy, then whatever you train first would have the biggest effect, right? And since the bench press trains the pecs, whereas the skull crusher doesn't, training the bench first should result in more pec hypertrophy 
and that was kind of what we've seen here. Although, once again, the magnitude of difference was relatively small. Suggesting that if exercise order does matter for hypertrophy, it's certainly not the most influential variable compared to say volume or how close to failure you train. The second study that's been published since this meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues is a study by Kuna and colleagues. This study featured a 63 week duration where they had a preconditioning phase to make sure all participants were at the same starting point, a 12 week training phase, then a detraining phase, and then participants were crossed over into the opposite condition of the first 12 week training phase. Let me elaborate on what that means. There were four conditions in this study. In all four conditions, participants performed the same training, performing training for both their upper body and their lower body. The only difference between these four conditions was what the order of the exercises performed was. The conditions were grouped into two pairs, condition one and two, and condition three and four. They were then cross assigned to condition two in the second training phase, and vice versa. And this applied to both pairs. Condition one trained their upper body first in each session followed by their lower body and specifically started each of these with multi-joint movements followed by single joint movements. So in this case they would perform the multi-joint movements for their upper body first followed by the single joint movements for the upper body followed by the multi-joint movements for the lower body followed by the single joint movements for the lower body. So compounds first they would perform the chest press then the seated row then the isolation movements the tricep push down and the preacher curl then the compound lower body movements the horizontal leg press then the isolation movements for a lower body the leg extension, lying leg curl, and seated calf raise. In condition two, they also started with upper body work, but instead started with isolation movements. Conditions three and four were the same thing, either starting with multi-joint movements or single joint movements, but starting their sessions with lower body work followed by the upper body work. And so essentially within this one study, using a crossover design, we had two research questions being answered. First, does starting your session with multi-joint movements or single joint movements make more sense? And second, in the context of a full body session, does starting your session with lower body movements or the upper body movements first make sense? All in all, they were performing 24 sets per session, three times a week for 12 weeks. So a pretty robust training intervention, something you would also do in real life. They measured one rep max of a few different movements performed during the training intervention. And to keep it brief, the exercise order didn't really matter for either hypertrophy scene or for strength gain scene. Regardless of exercise order, the authors noted that there were increases in muscle mass and strength. And as far as health outcomes went, let me quote the authors. Exercise order did not seem to influence the magnitude of resistance training effects on health parameters in trained older women contradicting our hypotheses. And whether or not participants started with upper body work followed by lower body work or vice versa also didn't seem to influence strength or hypertrophy meaningfully. Differences between the conditions in terms of hypertrophy and strength gains observed were generally in the ballpark of 0 to 0 0.15 or what we would deem trivial in terms of effect size. So in terms of hypertrophy, these results are in line with what we noted earlier from the meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues. No real differences based on the order of exercises on hypertrophy. However, when it came to strength, these these results do clash with previous research, with the meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues finding better strength gains with whatever is trained first, likewise with the Brandao study. Importantly, the authors speculated that this might have to do with the sex of the participants. In this case, they were older, untrained women. Since women generally seem to recover a little bit better from resistance training, it might be the case that exercise order doesn't matter quite as much for women as for men, as since women can recover a little bit better overall, they're able to recover from whatever exercise they perform first, having less of an impact on subsequent exercises. And so the combination of these two studies with the meta-analysis by Nunes and colleagues is all of the most recent evidence I was able to find on exercise order and how it seems to influence hypertrophy and strength. Based on this research and my coaching experience, let me give you a few practical takeaways on how to order exercises within your session. Start with compounds first. No, not that kind of compound. Although it would certainly boost your muscle mass, that's not what I'm talking about. Generally, I would recommend starting with multi-joint or compound movements first. Since compound movements train the most amount of overall muscle mass and thus have the biggest impact on your overall physique, and since most people care more about strength in compound movements than isolation movements, and whatever you train first gets a bigger strength improvement, training compound movements first does seem to make sense. And specifically in the Brandao study, for example, they observed better overall strength gains even in the isolation movement when training the compound movement first. And so as a general heuristic, I would probably train multi-joint movements first. Secondly, and this is more of a practical concern for my coaching and lifting experience, is to group similar exercises together. For instance, if you had a dumbbell row, a dumbbell press, and a dumbbell curl, 
in the same session, sequencing them consecutively makes sense. You're already in the dumbbell area and you already have a bench at hand. Why not save time and just do them one after the other? Generally, sequencing exercises in this fashion and maybe even selecting exercises that have similar equipment requirements will save time. As a third heuristic, especially for strength, do whatever exercise or muscle group you care about the most first. This is unlikely to be a huge factor for hypertrophy, as we discussed, but for strength specifically, if you care about getting stronger in an exercise, training it first within the session or earlier in the session is a good call. That's when you're freshest and when you'll be able to lift the most weight, hopefully contributing to greater strength gains. Next, especially for strength and not so much for hypertrophy, you want to pick an exercise order that maximizes performance across the session and keeps you operating at a relatively high level. For strength specifically and for powerlifters, there's two approaches. One in the off season or a little bit further away from the meet, I would recommend ordering exercises in a way that allows you to lift the most weight on the squat, bench, deadlift, and close variations of the main lifts. Since how much you lift does seem to influence how much strength you gain, it makes sense to do it. And then, as you get closer and closer to a meet, there may be a point where you want to practice doing the squat, bench, and deadlift in that order in the same session. Getting some practice doing it that way might just be helpful on meet day. Play around with exercise order, especially for hypertrophy where it doesn't seem to matter nearly as much, and find what you enjoy most. I find that certain exercise orders gas me out way more than others. And so what I like doing, for example, is starting my session with my calf and ab lock, if you decide to do it, hashtag team calves, so that I don't skip it. And because doing calves and abs first almost never impacts my performance on subsequent lower body training. And the final takeaway point, exercise order seems to matter more for strength-based work than for hypertrophy. And so if you're training for hypertrophy, don't stress too much about exercise order. If you're in a busy gym, just do things in a different order based on whatever equipment's available. And the final, final takeaway, I know you thought I was done, I wasn't done, is if you do any sort of power-based work or plyometric stuff, jumping, sprinting, etc., you will likely want to do that first in the session or as early as possible within the session. That is the video, broke down all of the research on exercise order that I was able to find on this topic on how to maximize your size and strength gains. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like the video, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell as well to get notified whenever a new video comes out. We're committed to bringing you high quality information on the Strong by Science channel, the home for the thinking lifter. If you'd like an expert coach to handle your training or nutrition, nutrition or to have a consultation with, check out strongbyscience.com slash coaching. If there's any other videos or topics you want to see us cover, leave a comment down below letting us know what you want to see. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time. Peace. Jesus Christ, I didn't check the um, results of the Brandao study strength-wise. Let me quickly check that out. Please let me open the PDF. It's free. Beautiful. Shout out to open access papers. Honestly, life-changing.